Hey everybody, Patrick Stewart here with open-dash.com, uh, the open-dash solution here. We're uh, proud to show you our current uh, alpha release that we just released here shortly. And uh, here it is up on the, uh, the GitHub uh, open-dash uh, repo. I'm gonna walk you through how to get everything going, including the, uh, the smart app uh, here. And uh, we'll get the smart app installed and smart things real quick. And so all you gotta do is uh, click on that and uh, you can either download it or you can go into the uh, the actual Groovy application file here, click raw, copy and paste that, switch over to the IDE, click on your My Smart Apps, click on New Smart App, and uh, wait a few seconds here, and uh, the Smart App new file stuff will, uh, will open up. And uh, I like to uh, just use from code, copy and paste that in there. Uh, and uh, control pay. there we go, and then uh, scroll up, and we will just give it a quick name uh, change so I know that uh, it's the demo version. You don't have to actually do that. Uh, click create. Go ahead and click save and publish. No big deals there. And uh, that will just uh, solidify our instance, and, uh, and then go ahead and click app settings once it publishes. Once you're in app settings, we need to uh, to do something. Uh, we need to enable OAuth, which is down here. Click enable OAuth, and uh, you can give it a display name if you want. Otherwise, you'll just get this long GUID. But we want that OAuth client ID and secret. Those are the two things that uh, give us what we want. So I'm just going to open up Notepad real quick and uh, copy and paste that into Notepad. There we go. And, uh, and that's it, that's all we need to do. Now we don't actually install the smart app or anything, so uh, that is done through the OAuth workflow. So now we're gonna talk about open-diy. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy the clone uh, directory git, git information. Now I created a file on my desktop called testing. I'm gonna open up that, that shift uh, right click by the way, and I'll open command prompt. And so we're just gonna run git, uh, git clone, and then that, that URL there. That's going to clone that down here real quick. Uh, go ahead and CD into that. And, uh, and then we're going to run a couple commands. First command we're going to run is npm install. That uh, runs us through all of the uh, necessary elements that are required for the application. Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open, enable live logging real quick just to uh, um, see all the stuff that's coming in from that side of things. No big deal there. And uh, once this is done, there's two other commands that we got to run to uh, to get this running. So there we go. Now we're going to run node install, <laughs> node dot node install, and uh, then node uh, index. And uh, node install just creates our database files. They're just flat JSON files. But then if you go to localhost the port uh, colon three thousand, you're good. Now we'll go into settings, and uh, remember those uh, those client ID and secret. We're going to copy and paste those into our text boxes here client ID and secret. Now don't worry, some of you might be saying, hey, uh, you're exposing those. I'm, as soon as I delete my smart app, uh, it's gone. So uh, next we wanna click connect with smart things. Of course I gotta click the actual button and you'll see that authorize, uh, select your location, wait for it to load. This will load up all the devices in the location. You'll notice that none of them are checked. Uh, so I've got a little JavaScript applet that allows me to click them all. Uh, but toggle the ones you want. You only have to click one per uh, one device in any uh, capability there, and it'll work. But now that we're connected, we should see weather flowing in there. And if that's flowing in, that means we're connected to smart things. Next thing we'll go to is devices. Now we got to synchronize our devices. So we click uh, get devices from smart things. This might take a few seconds to load, depending on how many devices you selected. Once we've got it all populated there, uh, we need to save that. Uh, that will create our local copy of our devices. And uh, we're good to go there. Now we can start creating dashboards. So click on dashboards, give it a name, click add, and uh, now we got a blank dashboard. That's it. So, uh, but you got to click the edit button. You can then quickly just select all and uh, go ahead and click add devices. Bam, they're all in there. And uh, if you go back to the dashboard, you'll see that they all populated. It's pretty ugly. I'll explain that in a little bit, but. Uh, but fundamentally, that's where we are uh, with uh, Open Dash right now. Things aren't working perfectly uh, because we have a template engine. Now, you can delete stuff. You can either go into Edit and disable it so it won't show up there. Uh, but it'll still be getting updates and various other... Well, it won't get updates, but it'll at least be there. Um, 
and at least it doesn't show up anymore. But uh, obviously you can remove them as well. So let's say you don't want this test image or some mini modes and some various other things we can get rid of. Uh, as, uh, as you go down the list, no big deal. Find them, get rid of them, check them. As you check them, you just got to uh, find the ones like, yeah, that test tile we don't want. And, uh, and then just click remove devices. They're off the list, no big deal. Now you can edit like my dimmer up here. I've got order you can actually set. So this is just a number. Uh, similar numbers will be grouped together. So if I set it to, to one, uh, we also have the attributes and commands that will populate based upon what we found. Soon that will be the real-time device. We'll give you a little button so you can actually see what its status is. But there, my dimmer's up on the left-hand side. Uh, I can uh, I can do other things. Uh, I can you know it's kind of neat. neat. Uh, you can go in and click edit and uh, so like these uh, these dimmers here. These are my uh, um, they didn't match based upon the template. So I'm gonna I'm gonna select that to be a dimmer uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna click save and I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna select the other one uh, and click save. I'm gonna change the order on that to two as well um, and I'm gonna go back into this one change the order to two as well. Uh, order isn't uh, restrictive. Uh, they're just going to compare. Now, if I were to reload this a couple times, they might swap out different. They, I think it defaults back to alphabetical after that. But uh, all I got to do is click on the little checkbox, uh, and my light came on. Isn't that cool? And you'll see here in a few seconds that uh, switch will now be switched on. Uh, so that's just how the status uh, elements work here. If I click it back off, uh, you can uh, wait a few seconds and you'll see that switch is now set to off. So uh, it's there's no refreshing of things. That's just how our tiles work. It's all happening in the background. Uh, it's all actually happening with jQuery, believe it or not. And uh, and our template engines are, are it's pretty cool. You can create all kinds of stuff. So all of these attributes for the default template should be updating. Uh, we've got some motion templates. We've got you know, the diatribe of stuff, that's a camera, believe it or not, that's just puking all of the attributes that are there. Uh, but all of the, the templates are in our data, or in our, not our data folder, but our app folder, uh, views and uh, devices. These are all the attributes. Now you can, you can copy one and create a new one. If you give it the exact device type name, it will match it automatically uh, that when you synchronize, uh, or I'm, I'm sorry, when you add a device uh, to a dashboard, it'll synchronize automatically. Now, uh, the cool thing about Open Dash is if you create a dashboard, a single device can have uh, a template based upon the dashboard it's in. So if you create two dashboards, add the same device, you can actually change the template. This gives you a lot of flexibility. I just want to quickly show you what the dimmer uh, div looks like. And you can see it's just, uh, it's just a couple nested divs with some values in here, some JavaScript uh, that gets populated thanks to our handlebars templates. Uh, and this stuff gets executed. You can see the jQuery stuff down below. You can see that the labels up above here in the span, you know, you've got a, uh, a span class level uh, that will populate the level value. Now we have a couple things down below that, that will then on change uh, update our, um, our range, our slider value as well. And uh, you can see that over here. You can see how this comes in. You've got the div tile, and you can see that we've got the name there. Uh, but under the details, you can see that that span class level is three, and the switch is currently off. That's how things are getting updated. We've got our scripts here. We do expose both the attributes, and we've commented out the commands. But those are the commands and everything you send through the, the, the data dash action uh, option that we have for, for our options there. But that's it. That's, uh, that's smart. Uh, uh, things to uh, uh, Open Dash. Uh, it's based upon Metro uh, UI uh, CSS. So this is this is the website you can use for the for the framework that we're using, uh, and uh, and that's basically it. So if you've got any questions or concerns, uh, certainly hit us up on the GitHub uh, forums and uh, uh, or join our Slack channel or anything else. And uh, really excited about our alpha test. Remember, alpha means everything won't work. Beta means broken. And we'll see you in the future.